Do you know local buckling limits the load carrying capacity of a steel member? In Eurocode 3, we account for local buckling by classifying the section. In this lecture, I will talk about section classification as per Eurocode 3. This is part 7 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please have a look at description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. In today's lecture, I will talk about local buckling, section classification. All these topics are related to one big topic that is buckling. What does it mean by buckling? It's failure in compression or can I say that it is instability? We all agree that buckling is a kind of instability. It happens due to change in shape and buckling always happens under compressive load. This is a column. If you apply loading, it's going to buckle. This is a beam, a cantilever beam fixed at one end. If you apply loading, it is moving sideways. Buckling is in stability that happens due to change in shape buckling happens when a member is compressed that leads to a question that why did we not consider buckling in tension members why not mm -hmm. if i pull this ruler it is more likely to stretch it is not going to buckle it is not going to cause change in shape but the same thing if i apply a compressive load if this is a beam if i'm applying compressive load to this ruler it is bending in the middle it is going out of the plane or if it is a beam if i'm applying load the deflection is happening out of the plane so it is going in out of the plane direction and it, it is it is twisting as well this kind of have buckling that happens in columns if we compress it this is termed as flexural buckling this time type of buckling that happens in beams it is termed as lateral torsional buckling because lateral deflection is happening and twisting is happening as well as a result of load application this ruler is twisting as well the so buckling we agree that it's instability it only happens when any member is in compression and what it does is that it it limits the load carrying capacity of a member. There are two types of buckling. One is local and other is global. In the example that I showed you a little earlier, flexural buckling that happens in columns or compression members. And second is lateral torsional buckling. And this happens in unrestrained beams. And I will obviously explain in a minute what does it mean by unrestrained beams. Restrained beams means that if, this, if the slab is attached to top of the beam, then it is restrained. Unrestrained means that if you have a beam where there is no slab or where there is no attachment of the slab to the beam then it is unrestrained and obviously we will cover it in detail but this is not my today's topic and then we have local buckling now local buckling only happens in some parts of beams and columns and i'll show you in, in a minute where does this happen now how do we take into account local and global buckling for global buckling we find out nbrd buckling resistance in columns in beams we find out buckling moment resistance and local buckling how do we take into account local buckling in euro code we take into account local buckling by section classification and this is our today's topic section classification if you see over here at the top figure this is a beam column joint where it beams are welded to the column and when we are applying loading the top portion is in tension and bottom portion is in compression because of this compression you can see that there are little indentations over here there is little wavy pattern at the bottom of the beam this is termed as local buckling and we want to avoid this local buckling and on the right side there is a little wavy pattern over here this one which is causing failure in the the sections again this is a test done in the lab you can see the way we pattern here and the columns you can see this pattern let us see how do we take into account local buckling remember that effects of local buckling in euro code 3 are taken into account by section classification and we will learn about section classification and these are some real life examples of the effects of local buckling and what will happen if we do not take into account local buckling here you can see shear buckling of web which can be easily avoided this is a stiffened plate to be used in bridges and other applications. Your local buckling is happening here. And then again, crucially, you can see that, that how this web is being crippled over here. All these failures happen in steel structures. So local buckling happens in steel structures. Because the sections are very thin and very high strength, that's why buckling happens. All the structural members are composed of individual plates. These individual plates, they buckle when we apply compressive load. Remember that buckling happens in presence of compressive load. 
Eurocodes. When we apply compression, buckling happens. Eurocode is a little bit funny, so they <laughs> they change the name of uh, web and flanges. So in Eurocode classification, the flanges are termed as outstand flanges, and web is termed as internal compression part. So this is something that you have to remember. What does it mean by internal compression part? I even did not hear about it before <laughs> reading Eurocodes myself. A web is termed as internal compression part and flanges are termed as outstand flanges and these are different sections. The key thing to remember here is that any section is made up of individual plates. So for example, this I section is made up of top flange, bottom flange and web. This tube section is made up of flanges and web. Again, this built up section is made up of web and then top and bottom flanges. The key thing about local buckling is that it prevents a member from utilizing its full potential. It limits the load carrying capacity. It limits the resistance. But what do we do to avoid buckling? So this premature failure can be avoided by limiting width to thickness ratio. Euro code 3 takes into account effects of local buckling by the section classification. And resistance to buckling is affected by various other factors as well. For example, residual stresses and geometric tolerances or out of straightness. If there is no imperfections, then buckling may not happen. The direction of the buckling is controlled by imperfections. These are various classes. If it is beam to column joint, you can see that this beam is attaining its full plastic moment. So for class one sections, they have high rotation capacity. When we apply loading to the joint, it will rotate quite a lot. It will deform a lot and then it will easily attain its plastic capacity means it will easily attain its material strength in other terms. And then class two sections, they have limited rotation capacity. You can see that after attaining plastic moment, moment capacity is reducing, which means that it will have limited rotation capacity. Class three sections, on the other hand, are not able to attain plastic moment. So we use elastic moment. Class four sections, and there are special provisions for that, even they cannot attain their elastic moment capacity. And then there are specialized provisions to take into account class four, and we will not talk about it, but there is a procedure given in Eurocode to account for class four sections. Now, again, uh, this is a repetition of what I talked about earlier, that class one sections can achieve plastic capacity with very high rotation capacity. Class two sections can attain their plastic capacity, but with limited rotation because of local buckling. Class three section, on the other hand, cannot attain their full plastic capacity and moment is essentially elastic moment and their rotation is limited as well. Class four section, on the other hand, local buckling prevents attainment of even elastic moment. Moment is going to be very low and certainly rotation is going to be low as well. Now we have to choose the highest section that is the least favorable. So if you have a beam, it has top flanges, it has bottom flanges, it has web. So you classify web and flange. For example, if web is class two, flange is class three, then you choose the highest one as overall classification. What is design implication? Why do we study local buckling? What is the design implications? So there must be design implication. When we choose a section, if it belongs to different classes, then we have to apply appropriate formula. And this is the design implication. And this is really very important to understand that what is the effect of local buckling and how this classification is going to affect the design. There are two main design components, compression resistance and bending resistance. So compression resistance we use in columns, bending resistance we often use in beams. I want your attention here. You can see that for class one, two and three sections, the compression resistance is actually not changing. For class four sections, however, we have this area effective times FY, but we will not talk much about class four sections. There is a special procedure to work out this area effective and you can find out in Euro code three, but I will not talk much about this. Now, how do we work out? These are resistances or capacities. Area of a particular section we get from section table and FY is material strength, which depends on steel grade, which commonly in the UK for open sections like a column sections or a beam section, we use S275 or S355. So area from section table and FY from steel grade or from table 3.1. And here we have plastic modulus. Again, this comes from section table and FY is the material strength and gamma M0 is a factor which is usually one in euro codes. And for class two, again, the formula remains the same. But remember that in class three sections, the member was not able to achieve its plastic capacity. So that's why we use this elastic modulus. We can 
can find out this elastic modulus and plastic modulus in section table. And then we have this W effective as well, but there is a special procedure for this W effective. So this is the design implication. So when we classify, always the first step is to classify the sections before we design them so that we can use appropriate formula. Local buckling limits the load carrying capacity. The way we can avoid it is through section classification and through limiting width to thickness ratio of a member. Now, how do we do it? The procedure is that first of all, we work out epsilon. Epsilon is under root 235. 235 comes from the formula over Fy. Fy is G distress it depends on steel grade so for example a steel grade here is s235 this steel grade is s275 these are two most common ones that we use in uk this is s355 we have these higher grades as well if you plug in these values of fy here then you can get value of epsilon that which are mentioned over here the first thing is that you work out epsilon the next thing is you work out width to thickness ratio but what width are we considering for flanges, we consider the width of the flat portion of flange and for beams, we consider width of flat portion of web. For beams, it's easier because this D dimension is actually width of flat portion of web. So D can be equal to CW or width of web. For CF, you can see that this comes from B. So if, if I wanted formula for C, it would be B minus thickness of web minus two times R, this root radius. Root radius is not included. Two times are. So this will give me these widths on two sides one here and one there. I need just on one side CF. So that's why I divide it by two to work out CF. And then you will see this formula in next slide as well. CW is simply equal to D. Or I can say that the formula for CW is H overall depth minus two times thickness of flange and minus two times this root radius, two times R. So this is how we work out CW and CF. So what we are doing here is that we are comparing CF over TF with the thickness ratio for flange and CW over TW with the thickness ratio of web with limiting values in Eurocode. These are the formula that I wrote a little earlier so you can have a look at them. I derived these formulas earlier. Once you have these values CF over TF from your chosen section, what you have chosen, then you compare it with limiting values in Eurocode and these are limiting values for flanges. In code obviously it appears differently and this is when you are class classifying it as a beam. Now you have to be very careful here. So when you are classifying a section as a beam, then outstand flanges are subjected to compression, but web is subjected to bending. Bending in a beam is taken by web. So you choose these two tables from table 5.2, which I'll show you a little later. And typical name for web is internal compression part. If you are classifying a section as a column, then you choose this outstand flange, which, is in, which will be in compression. These limits are same but web or internal compression part now is in compression in column. So you choose this as different. So that's why it is in yellow. The first one is the same. In case of beams, web or internal compression part is in bending. In case of column, web or internal compression part is in compression. So you choose this second table as a different table. Now this is how it looks like in Eurocode. So part subjected to compression, outstand flanges. It means that you have to use this for flanges regardless of these flanges come from beam or column and internal compression part is nothing but web if you have to classify a beam then web is subjected to bending and you use these limiting values if you have to classify a column then web is subjected to compression and then you use these values um so when you say compare do our calculated values need to be smaller than 42 e etc yes when i mean compare it means that you work out cf over tf for, for the section that you have chosen and if that value is less than or or equal to 9 epsilon, it means that it is class 1. If it is more than 9 epsilon, then it's class 2. And if it is more than 9 epsilon, but less than 10 epsilon, then it is class 2. If they are more than 10 epsilon, but less than 13 epsilon, then it's class 3. If they do not come into any of the category, then they are class 4. Now you have to choose the least favorable class. First, you have to determine Fy from this table 3.1, which is most of the time we will be using these things. Thickness is going to be 
less than 40 millimeter for most of, of the shelf or market available sections. So normally this will not apply, but it, it's important to know that it's there. And then you determine epsilon, the under root two, two, three, five, remember comes from the formula. A lot of students, they make mistake. They think it's steel grade, it's not. Fy is a steel grade, which comes from these values. Then you substitute these values in here for different classes. So your left side is for beam and your right side is for columns. The only different thing is, is this column. Web is in bending for beams. Web is in compression for columns. Web is termed as internal compression part or for any kind of section. So least favorable section is the highest one.